بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا يا أرحم الراحمين Today insha'Allah we will add to our collection one of the uh, Qudsi hadith that uh, we have started with uh, during this series. Our hadith for today is Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Al-ikhlasu sirrum min sirri الإخلاص سر من سر استودعته قلب من أحببت من عبادي Sincerity is one of my secrets that I interested the, to the heart of those of my servants whom I loved ما شاء الله ما شاء الله Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in uh, Al-Quran al-Kareem, he says, وَدْعُوهُمْ مُخْلِصِينَ لَهُ الدِّينَ And invoke him sincere to him in religion. So what is, what is, let's start with um, an, uh, understanding those words. So, what is dua? Wad'uhu. There is an order that we have to make dua. So what is dua? Dua is a request from someone who is unable to do something. So he goes to someone who will who is able to do that thing, the thing that he loves. To do. So, if you are unable to, to do something and you dearly want to do that thing, you go to someone to you seek help from someone who is able to do it. And when you ask, when you invoke Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then do it sincerely. So have sincere in religion. So you do not think of any other reason or of any other way that might help you other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just make sincere dua. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sincerely. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised us. Inni qareebun ujibu da'wata da'i iza da'an. I am close to you. I am not far. I'm close to you. If you ask, if you make a request, if you... Uh, 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 ask me for help if you call me then I will answer your call so this issue of sincerity you know it's it's manifested clearly in our relationship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala why do we worship Allah is it to be of the winners on the day of judgment? No. Is it to get into paradise? No. Is it to, avo to avoid hellfire? No. This is not why we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So why do we worship him? We worship him just because he deserves to be worshipped. And for no other reason. We do not associate any other reason for this with our intention. And this is complete sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
So when we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we worship him sincerely. And our intention is just for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, what is sincerity? What is sincerity? Sincerity is to refine. It's to, to filter. And it is, it is um, to have our intentions for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So pure intention that does not have any riya. It doesn't have any hypocrisy. Our intentions are pure for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in uh, Surah Al-Zumar, Ayah, Ayah 2, he says, إِنَّا أَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكَ الْكِتَابَ بِالْحَقِّ فَاعْبُدِ اللَّهَ مُخْلِصًا لَهُ الدِّينِ So indeed, we have sent down to you the book, O Muhammad. إِنَّا أَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكَ الْكِتَابَ بِالْحَقِّ In truth, we sent, we've sent down to you the book in truth. So worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So be sincere to him in religion. So sincerity is the core of everything. No hypocrisy. Pure intentions, pure intentions are only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When, when your actions are only for his sake, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you everything. So hypocrisy is like a flame that burns everything around it. So it eats the action that you are doing. Even if it is a good action, there will not be any reward for that action. For example, the one who pays sadaqah with the intention of showing off or with the intention that people would label him as a generous person. The, his money will be accepted. The poor is going to take the money. Uh, they will enjoy the money. The money will be spent. But what will happen? What will happen to that person? He got what he aimed for. He got what he wanted for this dunya. So, so he is known amongst people that this is the generous person. This is what he wants to, to, to have. This is what he wants people to say about him. Forgetting the day of judgment. So on the day of judgment, he will miss his reward. He will be called in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he will be told, you gave this sadaqah uh, to so and so on so and so date. And you paid this zakah to so and so and you gave this you gave that you gave this you gave that and he will say oh allah yes i did all that and allah will say to him you did all that so that people will say you are generous and they did so you got your reward in dunya, but you missed the real reward of the akhirah. So there is no reward for 
your actions, for your uh, uh, money that you gave in dunya, you will not get any reward for that in the akhirah, on the day of judgment. When the, when the actions are being scaled in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because your actions, your intention for that action was not sincere for me, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the real reward will be best. On the day that each small reward, each small good deed will count. Some people will be will will be in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they will have very good deeds. But they had during their life they had bad manners. فيأتي وقد شتم هذا. He would uh, harass this person. وضرب هذا. And he, he, he hit that person. وسفك دم هذا. He killed someone. فيأخذ هذا من حسناته. So the, the first one will take some of his uh, good deeds. The second one the, would take some of his good deeds. The third one would get some of his deeds. حتى إذا فرغت. So when his good deeds are done, there is no more good deeds. And there are still people who want their right on the day of judgment from that person. Then... Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would say, give him your bad deeds. So he got no good deeds and he is receiving the bad deeds of those whom he mistreated in dunya. So we have to pay attention. What, what are we doing in this dunya? We have to pay attention to the, to the intention of our deeds. So associate, associating another intention to that for the sake of Allah. So associating another attention to this intention will make people lose their reward on the day of judgment. But if the intention is just for the sake of Allah, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give abundantly. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives, he will make it a great reward. He gives, he gives without any fear that his, his kingdom is going to be uh, less or his reward is, is, is so much uh, so that it will decrease what, what he has. So you will feel that you are getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you do something and your intention is just pure for him, just pure for his sake. So you will feel that your bond with, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gets stronger. And this is what we really need in this dunya. We want to be closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is a story about sincerity. Uh, once there was a fearful man. Everyone fears this person. He was so strong. He was so oppressive. He was, he was a bad person. Everyone knew him for being a bad person. And everyone tried to avoid him. One day, this same person completely changed. And he became a friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when he was asked how this change happened, he said, he told the story. 
And he said, I know the reason. So he said, once I was passing by the market and uh, I saw a page of the Quran, just a paper of the Quran thrown on the street and people were passing over it. They were trusting uh, uh, over it and without noticing, of course. So we, they did not notice that this is a page of the Holy Quran. So seeing that, I immediately bent down, I picked it up, it was dirty, I wiped it, I cleaned it, and, and I went to the perfume shop and I bought a nice perfume with the only one dirham that I had in my pocket. So I perfumed this page of Quran and I put it on a high place that no one could pass over it. It will be safe on that high place. And he says, I swear that I heard a voice saying to me, I will bless your name because of what you did. And he was changed. He was changed from a bad, from being a bad person to being a very good Muslim. And he became a friend, one of the friends of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What's the lesson of this story? The lesson of this story is that do not belittle any sincere action no matter how small, small it is. So this man has honored a torn page of the Quran. He would not accept someone to step over this page of the Quran. So as a result to honoring the page of the holy book, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honored him. Everyone started to love him. The reward of Allah is amazing. So, again, the lesson is do not belittle any sincere action no matter how small it is. But similarly, never, ever belittle any sin. Never, never say that this is a small sin. I will do it. It's okay. And, and then I will make soba. I will make it still far. No. Don't ever cross that line. A sin is a sin. No matter how small or big that sin is. So imagine that you died while you are sinning. Then you will, when you, when you will be resurrected on the day of judgment, you will be resurrected doing the last action that you have been doing in this dunya. So you are sinning, then you will be uh, resurrected sinning. No, never belittle a sin. Never. But Always remember, always look at the one whom you disobeyed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, don't do this thing. This is a sin. And you did it. You disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You obeyed shaitan. No, this is not what we are, what we are in this dunya for. We don't want shaitan to be happy. We don't want to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
We want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be pleased with us. When he is pleased with us in this dunya, he will be pleased with us on the day of judgment. We are all going back to Allah. We are all going to stand before him. And he will justly judge all our deeds or our actions. What are we doing at this dunya? What are we looking at in this dunya? What, where are we going? Where are we heading? What, what are we doing with our hands, with our ears, with our uh, eyes? Are we with our tongue? Are we using all these the, the, these uh, organs or these uh, parts of our body to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or to disobey him? Allah gave us the eyes and he said, do not look at, at things that are, that are not low, lawful, that are haram. He gave us a blessing, so we have to understand. We have to obey Allah. He said, do not go to these places. Then we have to listen to Allah. We have to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. On the day of judgment, no one is better than another person except by righteous deeds. And those righteous deeds are all pure. They are all special. They are all for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Might be that same one action for two different people. One might be highly rewarded for and the other one uh, is is not accept, accepted. It all depends on the intention. It all depends on the sincerity of the intention. Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, إِنَّمَا الْأَعْمَالُ بِالنِّيَّاتِ وَإِنَّمَا لِكُلِّ مِرِيءٍ مَا نَوَى So actions are by their intentions. So all actions will be scaled according to their intention. So, have sincerity with all your intentions. Even if you are doing, if you are doing something, a routine thing, do it with the intention of pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You do your house chores every day. Just have an intention with that, with that. So the action will be changed to a worship, an action of worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, what makes a person have, have good intention and sincerity in their actions? It is fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is keeping in mind that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with us. He is overwatching us. He is looking at us. Do we want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala us, to see us sinning? No. Do we want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to see us obeying him? Of course. So Allah is overwatching. So we want him to be pleased with us. It is the same if someone is, uh, is present watching a person doing his job or, or not. So, if someone at work 
uh, when the bus is around, then he is so careful. He does his job completely on the spot. He, he, is, he is very accurate. But when the, the, the bus is absent, he, he doesn't. He's not as sincere as he is when the bus is around. But always remember that Allah is there. Allah is with us. So we have to perfect or our actions. We have to try to be as good as we can. Now moving to, to the second part of the hadith. Al-ikhlasu sirrun min sirri. And we talked about sincerity. We talked about the secret that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, has. And what does he do with this? So I entrusted it to the heart of those of my servants whom I loved. So where is this secret? It's in the heart. What, which heart? The good heart. The sound heart. Not the heart that is filled with dunya, with loving uh, this uh, vanishing uh, life. No. It's the heart that is filled with loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with loving Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's a pure heart. So with this heart, we... We want to have a, a sound heart. So to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment without any fears. So sincerity is one of my secrets. It's one of Allah's secrets that he has entrusted to the heart of those of my servants whom I loved. So what is that? How, how is that happening? It's in the heart. In the heart. So our heart should be uh, should, should have only the love of Allah and the love of his messenger. It should be a sound heart so that we will be saved on the day of judgment. If our heart is clean and we clean our heart by doing istighfar, we know that we all sin. But the eraser for that sin in the heart is just to do istighfar. Astaghfirullah. Astaghfirullah. So have a few minutes with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to ask him for forgiveness. Have a sincere tawbah and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. And again, Allah is overwatching. Allah is with us. He is listening to us. When you want to talk to someone and you don't feel that there is someone who deserves to listen to you or there is no one who is wise enough to help you, who is dependable to, to, to give an advice, then turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do not waste your time. Go directly to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's listening. He's waiting to hear your voice. And Allah loves to hear the voice of those whom he loves. So this sincerity 
is a secret that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put in the hearts of those servants whom he loves. MashaAllah. So we want to be loved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what is, what is love? Who are those servants that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves? Those are the people whose uh, Allah blesses in dunya and, and in akhirah. Those are the people whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless, blesses in this dunya and in the akhirah. Bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be with them in this dunya and in the akhirah and the day after and the life after. Those are the servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whom he loves. And this love relationship between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his servant is mutual. So it's from both ends. And it is, it is known that love cannot be from one end. It should be from both ends so that everything will go smoothly, so that everyone will be happy with the other person. Now, what leads to this love relationship? How can we have this love relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? We can follow several, several uh, things and the first one is it's loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and loving those whom he loves. So when you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then your heart is filled with the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is why we say, Noorun min noorillah. Ya Allah, we ask you for light. Of, of your light. We ask you for this special blessing, Ya Allah. So, so the first thing that leads to the love relationship between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to have Allah in the center of our hearts. And is to love those who love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves. So this is very important. Loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Loving the people of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whom if you look at their faces, they will remind you of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When they speak, they, their words will, will get out of their heart and they will go directly to your heart. When they give advice, this advice elevates you. It makes you go up and up. Those are the friends of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, Another, another way of this love relationship between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is connecting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by reading his words, by reading the Holy Quran, by understanding the meanings of the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when we understand the words of Allah, we have to apply them in, in, in our daily lives. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves someone, he sends them his blessing. He sends them divine help, divine support. He knows everything and he knows who deserves to be rewarded. 
So those are the people who are loved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So sincerity is a secret. Again, we, we say the definition of sincerity, it's a secret that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put in the hearts of those whom he loves. And who is the most loved by, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Is Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Prophet Muhammad? MashaAllah. He is loved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the degree that his name accompanies Allah's name. When, when we hear the uh, adhan, the, the person who is calling the adhan says, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammad al So I witness that Allah is the only God and that Muhammad is his messenger. So the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is combined with the name of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The name of his Habib. The name of the person whom he loves. And Adam alayhi salam realized how much Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So when he was begging Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness after eating from the tree, he said to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I ask you, Ya Allah, to forgive me for the sake of your beloved Muhammad. How, how is this happening? So he said, he's, he is the first person person to be created so how how was he asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive him for the sake of someone who is not born and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked him how did you know that I love Muhammad how did you know that and Sayyidina Adam alayhi salam said he replied to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he said, uh, he said to him, his name, when I was uh, making dua, when I was with, uh, with you, I looked up at the throne and I found his name is written with your name on the throne. And if you don't love him that much, you wouldn't have written his name. You wouldn't have combined his name to your name, Ya Allah. So, again, we have to have sincerity in all our actions. And I want to tell you a story of someone who was sincere and who asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sincerely and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fulfilled his request. And someone was saying, I work, but my salary is so little. It's, it's not it's a few, few, uh, few dirhams here and there, and I have so uh, uh, I have uh, borrowed money from so many people. I have so many debts, and when I get my salary, it won't be just it, it won't be enough till the end of the month. So I have to borrow from other people. And I have to borrow from here and there. I have to get money from this person and that person. 
So he said, I believe that I will, I will live like this until I died, until I die. I was happy with my, with my wife and she, she understands the situation that we are in and she's a very good wife. But these debts that I have are a big burden for us. So one day, I visited some of my friends. And one of them was exactly the same way as I am in. So he told him, uh, he, he knows uh, about his friend and when his friends were just opened his mouth to talk, to talk about the situation, about how much the salary is so little and it is not enough till the end of the month and how he borrows every now and then, he said, I'm gonna tell you something that happens to me. Just take a little bit of your salary and give it to sadaqa give it to people who are less fortunate than you are than yourself so he advised him just to pay sadaqa so when he when he went back to uh, to his wife uh, he told her what happened with his with his friend she said okay you won't lose anything. Why you don't just try it? Maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, will reward us abundantly. And she knows that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward them. So she urged her husband to, to pay sadaqah, to take some of, their, of, of his salary to pay sadaqah. So he said, okay, I'm gonna uh, uh, assign this much of money every every month I will pay a sadaqah. And that person said, I swear that a, no little time, just a very little time passed and I, I noticed change. And that change was in my uh in myself i became a little bit at ease i became pessimistic i i, I, I became optimist so so even though i had so much debts but i got relaxed and it was only two months that my life was started to be organized again and uh, my salary, uh, even though it is very little, but it started to have baraka. It started to be blessed. So I didn't notice that earlier. And he immediately knows that this is the blessing of the sadaqah that he is paying every month now. So Allah is helping him. Allah is rewarding him. And he uh, calculating the blessings, calculating the extra amount of money that he has because of the reward of sadaqah, then he was sure that it won't be a long time and all his debts will be paid off. So later on, he got into, he was talking to one of his relatives and he got into the, uh, uh, a little bit into real estate with him. So he started to send some some clients for him and for each client 
that would buy something from them or rent something, then he will get some, some benefit from that. And subhanAllah, he said, in no, in, in no time, I started to feel how the reward, how the blessings, and I started to save some money now. I started to, to do uh, so, so, so many different things, even though they are little, but all of them are successful. He had complete trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He knew that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is rewarding multiple times when, when, when he, is, he is going to pay this sadaqah. So, do not, again, do not belittle the any small deed that is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those servants whom he loves. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to entrust uh, love in our hearts and to make our hearts shine so that they would accept the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, of the Holy Quran. So our hearts will, uh, will become sound hearts. That we will meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with a sound heart. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those whom he loves. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to highly reward us. He's there. He's hearing us. And he is the most dear. We just need to ask him. So, Ya Allah, we are asking you to bless us. Ya Allah, you are listening to us. You know that each one of us has their own, uh, uh, their own issues. So we ask you, Ya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to help us all. And with this, we come to an end to, our, to today's session. And we have one more session next week, inshallah. And that would be the last session to end up this series, inshallah. وَصَلِّ اللَّهُمْ عَلَى سَيِّدِنَا مُحَمَّدٍ وَعَلَى آلِهِ وَصَحْبِهِ وَسَلِّمْ يَا رَبَّنَا لَكَ الْحَمْدُ كَمَا يَنْبَغِي لِجَلَالِ وَجْهِكَ وَعَظِيمِ سُلْطَانِكَ وَالصَّلَاةُ وَالسَّلَامُ عَلَى الْحَبِيبِ الْأَعْظَمْ سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته